What's up guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make a candy apple made of candy in resin. Now this apple was actually molded off of a real apple, so it's one of one. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to mold anything and make anything of anything. So check out how to make anything. All right, so to make a candy apple, first thing you need is an apple. So go to your grocery store, check out a bunch of apples, find the thickest one. This is the one I picked. Of course, you need some candy. So for this, we're making a apple made of sprinkles. Next, you're gonna need some silicone rubber for our molding. Now, this is a fast setting silicone. Um, you can get slower ones, but I just wanted to get this all done in one day. Of course, you're gonna need some resin and I'm using my boys art resin. They're the best because if you look here, it says no BOCs. That stands for no volatile organic compounds. Meaning you can do this inside, it's safe. It's not gonna smell bad, it's great. You need some foam core and that's for our mold walls. You're gonna need to get some glaze. Now this is some triple thick glaze. You paint this on, but I actually have this in a spray form as well. And I can tell you guys right now, if you're gonna go down this route, get the spray paint can, it's way better. It goes on smoother. It's funny that I say that and now I use the, the paint on version, but I just wanna show you guys what the effect does. I ended up using the spray version, but just to show you guys what it looks like, this stuff, once it's applied, makes whatever object it is on super, super glossy and shiny. It almost makes it look wet. And this is why I use the paint version because it sort of drips down. It doesn't look as good. Now, while that dries, you're actually going to make your foam box. So for this, we're going to cut out a base. We're going to glue down some walls and try to get it close to the apple. Not too close, but not too far. You don't want to waste the silicone here. And then just hot glue them down just like this. And you can already see, like, look how shiny that apple is. Once you have the walls up on your mold, you want to go and reinforce every single crack with hot glue. This is going to ensure that the silicone rubber doesn't seep out. Now it's time to drop in our shiny apple, put it right in the center so none of the walls are touching, just like this. And we are gonna grab our silicone. Now this is a two part silicone, part A and a part B. It's a one for one mix, it's super easy. So whatever you pour of part A, you pour the exact same amount of part B. But today we are gonna use the entire bottle of part A, just like this. And then you're gonna mix in the entire bottle of part B. Now this is blue, and the reason why they're two different colors is that when you mix them, once the white is completely gone and the blue is actually a brighter blue, you'll know it's completely mixed in. Now, when I pour this, I pour it in one corner from pretty high up and I just let it take over whatever object it's covering. Don't go and drip it everywhere. This way it's complete coverage of silicone. And now for the next 30 minutes, it's gonna cure and also degas itself. So. Go grab a snack, watch a TV show, and then come back in 30 minutes. Now it's time to unmold it. It's not as clean. It's sort of a frustrating process when you're using foam core, to be honest. Like, it sticks like this? Oh, it's so frustrating. We're going to remove our object, so in this case, the apple. So I'm cutting out a little hole at the top. And then we're going to do a zigzag cut so I can actually open the mold a little bit more so I can pry out the apple. For some reason, I decided to use a spoon, and it didn't work. It completely bent the spoon. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you just use your muscles and it'll pop out just like a little pimple. Check it out. This is why we actually needed the glaze. Silicone rubber will take on the finish of whatever you're molding. So I wanted it to be a nice, shiny, glass-looking apple. So I had to make sure the mold actually looked like that as well. Now we're moving on to resin. I, uh, I buy these gloves and every time I open them, guys, the box opens like this. It's so annoying. Pop on some gloves and make sure you snap the wrist. Now it's time for the resin. We're gonna pour out probably about a third of this cup full of resin. And then we're gonna move over to the hardener and pour the exact same amount in a different cup of hardener. We're gonna mix the two together and stir for like a solid two minutes. Usually I would do this slow, but because we're filling it with sprinkles, I don't really care about air bubbles all that much. But yeah, you wanna usually stir for two to three minutes. We're gonna drop in some sprinkles. You're gonna see guys, I use a lot of sprinkles because it sinks and I don't want any sort of gaps with resin we used almost one for one with sprinkles to resin. The texture will be like oatmeal. Normally resin would kind of pour off like a syrup, but since there's so much sprinkles in this, it comes off like a clumpy oatmeal. And now we're gonna fill our apple mold with this sprinkle mix. Now let's say you guys were using resin without sprinkles and you want it to be crystal clear. Well, at that point, I'd say put it into a vacuum chamber to get rid of all the bubbles, which I'm gonna show you here. It goes to the top. And the reason why it keeps sinking like that is because I'm letting air back in um, because I don't want it to overflow with resin, but you can see there's quite a bit of bubbles. But again, it was because I stirred really fast and when we're working with sprinkles, it doesn't really matter. Also, if you have really bubbly resin, if you leave it for a little bit, it's all gonna froth to the top. And you can take a heat gun and just quickly pop them all. 
So both ways work. All right, here's the biggest takeaway. A lot of candy, especially sprinkles, will sink. And that's pretty much it for day one. We have to now wait overnight and we can demold it in the morning. Day two, our mold is ready. Okay, so I put on some elastics just to reinforce the walls with the jigsaw cuts. You can peel off the top layer where it overfilled. It's super easy and it's clean. Nothing sticks to silicone, remember that? And then we go ahead and pop it out. Similar to how we got the apple the first time, it's gonna take quite a bit of muscle. Guys, check this freaking thing out. The wick, look at the wick. I didn't expect that to take. I was gonna make a fake wick, but it actually took. I can't believe that. But it looks great. Look how shiny it is. And that's because we did the glaze first. Really, really happy with how this turned out. Now the bottom where we actually poured it in, there's a bit of overfill. We're gonna have to cut that off with a Dremel. So just be very, very careful with this. I'm using the, uh, the blade on the Dremel. We're just gonna cut off the extra resin. Once that's done, we're gonna sand the bottom now so it's completely flat so it'll actually sit on a table nicely. Now we're gonna rinse it and actually you take an old toothbrush and clean out all the cracks we just created with the sanding. Since we actually scratched up the bottom of our apple, we're gonna use some UV resin. This stuff dries in like a minute under a black light. It's amazing, but it is expensive. I got this black light on Amazon for like 15 bucks, but it's necessary. Otherwise this stuff will never dry. So now I'm applying the UV resin to the bottom and you can see how it's going back to like glass clear again. Pop on the black light and I actually leave it there for a solid minute. And just like that, that resin is done. And here we have a beautiful candy apple made of sprinkles. I'm actually so shocked that wick took. I'm still amazed by it, but that's how you do it, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or comment down below. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't yet. If you want to see additional photos of this project, head over to my Instagram, at Danocracy, and follow me there. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.